My name is Nancy Durrell McKenna. I'm a professional photographer and the founder director of the charity Safe Hands for Mothers. This was shot in the Kapchawara district of Uganda. We see Rose, who is a mentor and is mentoring the two girls sitting on the ground for the ritual of being circumcised. She is giving water to her daughter, Christine, who is 18 years old. And we see Beatrice sitting on the left. Where Beatrice comes from, another community, they do not practice circumcision. And when she moved into the community where her husband lives, he said, this does not matter that you are not circumcised. I want you so badly. However, as time has gone on, she felt that perhaps she should be circumcised. As an uncircumcised woman in this community, she loses her right to speak up at a community gathering. She also cannot clean the clay floors. She cannot go up to the granary to get maize. She cannot milk the cows. Children can fetch the water well before she can. We see her with white flour on her face. This is a preparation for the ritual that she will go through of being circumcised. In this community, bravery during the cutting or during circumcision is extremely important, and the husbands-to-be are often present. Should they see their girlfriends flinching, blinking, screaming, they may decide not to marry her. The tools of the trade, we see a razor blade and we see acacia thorns. When we talk about circumcision, there are usually three, sometimes four types. In the first type, there is partial or whole removal of the clitoris. In the second type, you have partial or complete removal of the clitoris, including the inner labia. In the third type, known as infibulation, you have partial or whole removal of the clitoris, the inner labia, and the outer majora labia. The skin remaining is pulled together very tightly in the third type and either sewn together or it's sutured together using these acacia thorns. The fourth type is usually associated with anything to do with piercing, cauterizing, scraping of the vaginal area. A traditional circumciser demonstrates infibulation. She's using her dress to show us how, with a razor blade, she would take away the inner labia, the outer labia, and the clitoris. Often, it is not a clean razor blade they are using. They may use the same blade on several girls. Traditionally, they would break glass and use that to circumcise a young girl. Important to note that this practice is done without any form of anesthesia. Having removed the clitoris, the inner labia, and the outer labia, the circumciser pulls the remaining skin together and sutures them using acacia thorns. There's a piece of white string. She'll also weave that white string around the acacia thorns. She'll leave it there for two to three days until the skin is absolutely closed shut. This leaves a very small opening the size of a pea through which the woman or young girl must menstruate and urinate. In this photograph, we see Medina with a very gnarled face. Medina comes from a desert community in Djibouti, and she is a traditional circumciser. In response to why does she continue to circumcise young girls, she said, 
to feed my family of ten children. My husband is dead. I have no one to help me. That is why I circumcise. There was a male representative coming that day to try and discuss the harmful nature of female genital mutilation. The woman in the front row wearing a red shawl, she started to laugh when the facilitator was telling them this. She said, I would never let my daughter out on the street alone if she had not been circumcised. I could not trust her. In this particular desert community in Djibouti, the women present at this meeting are all Muslim. However, nowhere in the Quran does it say that women must be circumcised. It is not an Islamic issue. It is also a Christian issue, but nowhere in the Quran nor the Bible does it say that women must be circumcised. Worldwide, we know now that up to 140 million women and children are living with the effects of female genital mutilation, including 92 million girls over the age of 10 in Africa. But it is important to note that through migration and the great diaspora communities that we have, we are now experiencing this practice in countries like the UK. So it's not just a practice that we think of that happens over there. It's actually could be happening on our doorstep.